In this video, I'm going to show you how to use one of the most powerful form builders for WordPress. I'm going to show you the free version and the paid version. With the free version, we're going to create forms that allow multiple file uploads and have repeater fields, which are not free features in many other forms. In the paid version, you'll see how to add conditional logic to your form, how to use the signature field, which is just like DocuSign, how to require payment to submit the form. You're going to want to stick around at the very end of this video so you can see just how powerful this form builder is. Hi, I'm Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Now let's get started. To get started, we have to log into the WordPress dashboard. And first, we're going to install the Bitforms plugin. So let's go to Plugins and then Add New Plugin. Search for Bitform. This is the one we want right over here. Has 5 out of 5 stars, 7,000 plus active installs. Last updated three days ago and compatible with the current version of WordPress. All of that looks fantastic. I'm going to click on Install Now. If you're installing this on a live website, you might want to back it up first just in case something goes wrong. I've got a tutorial in the description down below that'll help you back up your site and restore it if something happens. Click on Activate to activate that plugin. First, I'm going to show you the free version of the form and some of the stuff it can do, including multi-file uploads for free. And then we're going to install the pro version and then we're going to check out multi-step forms and conditional forms and signatures and things like that. When we install this, we have a new Bitform menu over here. If we go to all forms, you may see some notifications and we have no forms yet. So click on create first form and we can choose from a whole bunch of templates. There are some that are labeled as pro, not many. There's two, the payment ones labeled as pro, WP auth labeled as pro that'll connect to the WordPress registration forms and user forms. So you can have these forms that you create register people right to your WordPress site. So those are the pro ones currently for these templates. There's lots of different options. I'm just going to choose a regular form, this one right here. And now we have a blank form. The background is dotted because there is no background currently. We have to customize all those settings. Or you can click on the little paintbrush here and choose the Altasian theme. And then it's just a simple white background, gray boxes. And it works great on most sites just like this. The first thing we're going to do is check out how many different fields there are. There are lots. They're listed over here. They're drag and drop. I'll let you read through these. Some of them are labeled as pro because you have to have the pro version to use them. Others, most others, are part of the free version. This is a very capable free version for a form builder. Even the multi-step forms is part of the free version. So you can have as many steps as you want for free. So I'm going to drag and drop the repeater field in here. We have to drag and drop something else now inside of the repeater. In this case, it's going to be file upload. So we can have a multi-file upload form. Super straightforward. I'm going to change the repeater name here to please upload your file in bracket files so people know it's more than one. And I'm going to add another repeater because I saw something interesting. Oh, not inside the repeater though. Add the repeater outside the repeater. And I want to add the URL. And for this form label, I'm going to say, what are your social links? And they can add them down below. And that's really all you have to have. If I click on update right now and then preview, we've got a form rocking and rolling. This up here would not be part of the form when you embed it on a page. This just gives you information about the form ID, JavaScript size, and CSS size. Developers might find this very nice to have that visible. So if we fill out this form just for fun, my form for the message, and then we can attach a file up to two megabytes. Let's attach that one some AI image stuff I was playing around with on my AI channel. If you don't know about my AI channel, I'll link to it in the card up above and you can go check out my AI related videos. I've got another uh, AI video here somewhere. AI image, sorry, of Arnold. There he is. Now we've added our images. You can add as many as you want with the free version and different file types too. With the pro version, however, you can have a min or max for the real count, which might be a smart thing to do. You don't want people spamming your inbox with 15,000 images attached to the form. That'll probably time out. But you know what I mean. You don't want to be spammed with all kinds of stuff so you can have a maximum number of, of repeaters they're allowed to do. And in this field, I'll add some social links. There's Facebook, Facebook again, but Facebook group. Add YouTube in there, add our x.com link. You get the idea. You can add as many as you want. If you click on submit. It submits the form. It's successfully submitted. I don't know if that was an actual live submit because it's a test form or it's not even published yet. It's just the, the preview of the form. But if you go to entries 
it worked. So there's our entry right there. You can click on any section of this form and it'll pop up information on the right. Or if you click on, for example, the view repeater data, it shows you directly those uploads. You can see these images were attached and uploaded. This is Arnold, if you couldn't tell, that's Sylvester. Uh, and then for the social links, it has them all listed right in here. Super convenient. There aren't many free forms that allow you to add repeater fields and file upload fields where you can upload multiple files and do it so easily built right in to the form. I mean, it was so simple to do that. If you want to change the styling and the appearance of your form, which you probably do to fit it in with your website, click on this little stack up here. And we have the ability to tweak all of these elements right here in the free version. In the pro version, we can tweak individual elements to our heart's content. But for the free version, we do overall elements. So if we adjust the labels, it'll do all the labels. Whereas in the pro version, we can adjust a singular label if we wanted to. So we can add a background. Let's add an image to our background. Let's upload an image. Let's use this one right here. Let's make the size, cover, position. I want to make it center. There we go. Make sure it's no repeat. Look, we got a nice image in the background. It pops out pretty hard. So I'm going to go into the form container, which is the next level in. The wrapper contains the container, but it's almost the same size. So the wrapper and container are right on the outside edge of the form, and you can style both in conjunction. So we add an image to the wrapper, and now if I add a background to the container, I can make it a color, for example. Let's make it, make it gray, light gray. And you can add transparency and you can fade out or wash out the image in the back so it's not as in your face and that's a pretty slick looking form right there i can add a box shadow so you can see how it pops off the page if we preview the form it looks a lot more interesting now so there's lots of options for all your styling for all the different fields subtitles what have you you have styling options and then once you've styled the form you're going to want to head into the settings so you can have or, or set important stuff about your form. A lot of these settings are labeled as pro, and you probably want to have some of these, especially the honeypot trap for bots, the recapture, maybe even storing the data into the database. There's various things that the pro version will offer that you might need. One of those things might be conditional logic, which we'll look at in just a few minutes on the pro version. We do get one conditional logic message. So this is a success message that will be shown when the form is submitted. And it's not an email. This is a message that appears on the screen. And you probably saw it a moment ago as a little green box on the bottom when we submitted our form. And you have all kinds of ways to show this form based on various conditions. The email templates, from what I can tell, you can have as many as you want for free. I'm going to call this template name, send to form submitter. For the subject, I'm going to say thanks for submitting the form. And I'm going to say what a great way to fill out a form. And you can add form fields. So we could add the message you wrote and then have that in there. Maybe a little thanks. That's the end of the email. For the form fields, all we have is these three options because that's all we had. And it looks like the image repeater field doesn't work. We have smart tag fields. This allows you to pull in information related to your website, the current date, the user. You can do math calculations. You can pull in information about posts. You can do all kinds of stuff in here. So you have ultimate flexibility for customizing the data that's in your form. You can also very quickly add all the form fields by clicking on map all field with table. And it gives you all the field data right in there in a table. And then you can also have map all field without a table. So it just has it like so. So you can have that however you want to. Then click on save template. Then you can add a new one. And maybe this is for admin. Your form was just submitted. And then you do the same thing as before. Use all these different options to create this email exactly how you need it. You can also integrate with a lot of different things. This is part of the free version as well. So if you have, for example, let's see a MailChimp account, all you need is your MailChimp client ID and secret. If you don't know where to find that, you click on this link or watch the video in the card up above and I'll show you in the video where to find these things. Then you authorize meaning you connect to your MailChimp account, and then you can choose which fields to map into your MailChimp account. So when people are submitting their name and email, they could be going right in your MailChimp. And I'm going to show you in the next part of the video how you can add 
a conditional field, a checkbox, that allows them to decide whether they want to be on your newsletter or not. So you can have that happening conditionally, depending what they check on the form itself. And there's lots more settings to go through. We're not going to go through every single one, but there's lots. And one of the cooler ones, not that what we've seen so far isn't cool, there's form abandonment. That's on premium. This is kind of like cart abandonment, but if someone starts filling out a form, if it's an important form, you might want to encourage them to come back and fill it out completely. So you can, if they entered the email address, you can then notify them to come back and finish the form. And we have conversational forms. This allows the form to feel more like a conversation. You might recognize this as jot forms format. And basically it just walks you through the form, which is super cool. And all we did to turn it on was come to this page and click on this toggle. And now we have the form here. This background isn't the perfect design for this type of form setup, but you can change the theme settings a little bit, maybe tweak that. You can change the conversational step settings. I'm just gonna keep it all as default. We're gonna try it out. Click on start. What's your name? Bjorn. Next, email. Bjorn at wplearninglab.com. Next, what's your message? Great form. Next, file attachment. Upload a file. Let's do this blank one. That's a PDF. Let's upload that. And then let's go ahead and upload uh, this blank one. What's this? A blank Word doc. All right. I don't want to skip it. I want to press enter. Like it says here, so it goes to the next page. Then we can add our social links. What's a real URL? That's not real, apparently. Let's do that. Yes. Form successfully submitted. And the conversational form is super cool because it's like Jot Forms which I'm sure you've heard of, or maybe not, but it, it makes forms much more engaging and entertaining and just more fun and people are more likely to fill them out. That's a super way to be able to increase your form conversions. So now we're gonna install the pro version and see what kind of neat stuff we can add with the pro version. The pro version can be found at bitapps.pro forward slash bit dash form. I'll link to it in the description down below. It is an affiliate link. If you end up buying through that, I do get a credit for that, but it does not make it more expensive for you. This helps you keep making these videos for free. So all you got to do is come here, go to the pricing page. Currently there's a Halloween special. This will be gone by the time this video is done because I'm recording it on Halloween and I'm not going to get it out today. So it might be a Black Friday deal here by the time you see this video. So make sure you check that out. There's also lifetime options. And once you've bought the plugin, you'll be able to download it and then come into WordPress and upload it. So if you go to plugins and then add new plugin, go to upload plugin, choose file, we find the plugin and upload it, install it, and then activate it to dismiss all these dismiss all these notifications up here. And then once that's installed, we have to go to BitForm and then license. And you can connect with BitApps right here. And then if you're logged into your account, it's going to automatically activate the license key. And then we're all good to go, or we should be, with all the pro features. So if we go back to all forms, let's create a new form. Let's choose contact form Altation theme. And now we're gonna play around with some pro features. I'm gonna add another step. That's not a pro feature, that's on the free free version as well. But on this step, we're gonna add some pro fields. Signature is one of those. So you can have people add their signature. So they can sign like that. Or that's no good. This is what my signature looks like. That's perfect and submit that as a signature. You can put that right on the form and then that is submitted with the form. That's super slick. And then we're gonna add a checkbox. And this checkbox is part of the free version as well, but the way we're gonna use it is gonna require some conditional logic. And in the free version, if you recall, we are allowed one conditional, which is already used as the, the message after the form submitted. And the pro version opens up unlimited conditional logic workflows. So we have our checkbox here. Let's change this to no label. And let's go down to edit and add options. I'm gonna remove two of these. Do you want to join our awesome newsletter? I'm going to make this required. You can make it checked by default. I'm going to do that as well. And close it up. There it is right there. And one thing we have to do before we go and try this out is go to back to step one. And this submit button, move to step two. Put it in step two instead of step one. That makes more sense. We're going to replace this later on with a payment button. But first I want to show you this newsletter logic that we're going to create. So let's click on update. Make sure we have previous and next buttons on each step. They should be added by default, but if they're not, you have the ability to add them with these two widgets right here. So let's view this form. Let's fill it out really quick. 
signature. It's beautiful. Do you want to join our awesome newsletter? Checked or unchecked? Let's keep it checked. Let's click on submit. Our form has been submitted. If we go to the entries, we have our entry right here. We can see our signature. It's a beaut. And our checkbox was selected. But we want to have some conditional logic based on that so that only when it's selected are they added to our mailing list. We're going to do that inside of settings and conditional logics and then click on add conditional logic. Here it is right here. Let's call this one newsletter. And we have to set a bunch of options in here. So when is this action going to run? Is it going to run when the form or the record is created or edited? Is it going to run when the record's created, when it's edited, or when it's deleted? I want to run it on record create, which is when the form is submitted and the data is input into our website or sent to you via email. The action effect should run always, only on form load, only on field input, only on form validate, only on form submit. I'm going to choose that last one because we don't want, because you could have it on field input, like when they check and uncheck the box, it could then automatically send the data to your newsletter provider. But you don't want to do that. You want them to actually check it and submit it, in my opinion. The action behavior is either set to always or there's a condition. If you have it on always, you can select integration right here. And this is where you could find MailChimp or uh, Google Docs or tons of other integrations that you see listed here. You configure them and then you can add them as an integration right here. And you can have that information added to your account, whatever you're connected to. I'm going to have the action behavior be conditional because the reason we added that checkbox is to add that condition. So I'm going to delete the or. So we just have one condition. And we're going to select the form field of B27. If we go back to the form builder, our checkbox right here is B27. And you can't change that name. That's the field key. So it's got to stay how it is. And if we go back to our conditional logic, see if it saved all that work. It did. It saved without us clicking update or anything. So we've got the B2-7. If this is not null, as in it was selected, then we do what we see down here. In this case, add an integration or send the data to an integration. So that's how we can add conditional fields and have it have things happen conditionally on the back end, like adding people to newsletters. And this could be a terms of service checkbox that allows you to, or blocks the submission of the form if they don't check the box. It could be, can't think of any others off the top of my head, but there's lots of things you could do with conditional checkboxes like this. For the submit, I want to add a payment button. You have the option of adding PayPal, Razorpay, Stripe, Molly. I want to add Stripe. This will probably ask me to set it up. Yeah, so to use Stripe, you must configure the Stripe app from the app settings. So let's click on that and go to the app settings. Integration name, Stripe. We need the publishable key and the secret key. Please visit the Stripe developer dashboard. Let's click on that link. They make it so easy. They give you all the links to go right to the pages where these things exist. So there we go. Click to copy. Boom, that's copied. Paste that right there. And the secret key, let's copy that. Throw that in there. Save it. Please recheck your secret ID and client key. I will not because I just copied them and they are correct. However, I am on a local site, so that could be a problem. So I switched to a live site that's live on the internet, not on my local computer. And now the Stripe settings should work just fine. And I've copied and pasted the keys in already. Click on Save. And this time it worked. So if you're developing locally, it may not work or it may work as well. Usually stuff connects fine to the internet on my local computer, but for some reason Stripe wasn't in this example. Now that we have that set up, we can go back to our form, go to step two. I just recreated the form we had on the local site. So it's all the same. If we drag and drop the Stripe option in, we should be able to delete the submit button now because the payment button submits the form once payment is completed. Click on update to save that. Let's click on preview to check it out. Fill in our details, signature, beautiful. Do you want to join our newsletter? That'd be great. Do I want to pay with Stripe? I do. Let's pay. I'm not actually going to pay anything. Let's see what happens. Our payment fields pop in and they can pay. Once they fill it in, click on pay now and your form is submitted and ready to rock and roll. 
instead of having just a pay button like this, you might want to have like a little message, like $5 to join the newsletter or tell them what they're paying for, essentially. And what you can have is a website without WooCommerce that allows you to accept payments for whatever products you're selling by having these forms. Because you can create as many forms as you want. And then we can integrate this form with our website wherever you want. So we go back to our forms, click on the copy button to get the short code. Now you can add this to Elementor, Gutenberg Blocks. You can add it to Divi, any page builder you want. Let's just go to pages and see what we have on this site. Let's just edit the home page. I believe this one is a Gutenberg Block Editor page. And we can add the form right there, for example. Let's add another short code. Throw the form in there, save it view the page and then scroll down a little bit to our new arrival so that was the first short code and there's our form right there which we can then fill in you see me fill it in tons of times don't have to see it again but there's our form and we could go into an elementor page it's an elementor page right here let's edit with elementor and we can easily add a short code as we just saw to add our form and the presentation inside of elementor is not perfect as you can see it's all messed up but when we save this and we look at it on the front end, it works just fine. So I'm not sure if it's my Elementor setup or what have you, but if we preview this page, the form appears and works as it should. It's just the back end Elementor display that's not great. And there you have just a couple use cases for the Bitform form builder, which is super powerful, even the free version, where we took a look at uploading multiple files and having repeater fields in the free version. You can also do multi-step forms in the free version. And then we added the pro version, so you could see how the conditional fields worked and how you could integrate that with an email autoresponder if you wanted to. And we also checked out how to add a payment button so people have to pay to submit the form. If you want to check out Bitforms, this is their website right here. There's a link to it in the description down below. It is an affiliate link. If you click through that and end up buying, I do get a credit for that, but it does not make it more expensive for you. And there's a lot more features you can read about in here. You can read about features, integrations, check out the documentation, which is super thorough, which is really important for when you're working with new plugins and things that have help and help documentation. You can even view tutorials on YouTube, search the documentation, and you can use live chat and the contact form to talk with people at BitApps directly. And incidentally, I did a video on BitSocial right here recently. I'll link to that in the description down below and the card up above. It's created by the same team behind BitForms, and it's a great social sharing plugin for WordPress. So make sure you check out that video as well. If you got value from this video, please subscribe and hit the like button to let me know. And then check out this video right up here, which is about the BitSocial plugin for social sharing on your WordPress site. Super plugin created by the same people as BitForms. Make sure you check that out. I'm Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.